So first of all, I'm going to go over to Pearlene Sanger or Pearl. Um, some of you may know Pearl, but, and she's been involved in the Labour Party for a number of years as an organiser, uh, working in elections and referendums up and down the country. She's also spent a stint in America um, and supported two presidential campaigns, including Hillary Clinton's in 2016. So without further ado, Pearl, over to you. Hello, can everybody hear me? I was on mute for a second. Um, I'm sitting by the road, so sirens may go. So <laughs> just giving you all a warning. Um, hi, I'm Pearl Sanga. Thank you, Nishaba, for the intro. Nishaba also joined me um, for part of the Clinton campaign, which is really, really fun. Um, I think it's amazing that we're doing an event like this, and um, I'm excited to speak to all of you about my experience, some of the challenges um, that I had, and um, you know, I'm I'm interested in how you all think um, uh, we should be moving forward, and I'm looking forward to questions too. So just to start, I um, started in um, Swansea University. Um, I think in 2008 or nine, and I graduated from there. And it was while I was in university that I was introduced to Young Labour. Um, and we were really, really uh, involved in sort of resetting up Welsh Young Labour at that time. So there was a good kind of core group of us that were involved in supporting Welsh Labour through campaigns. So that's sort of how I got um, my intro into all things Labour. Uh, from there, I went on to work. I had an internship at first, um, a very short paid internship, I will say, uh, for in the MP in Swansea West. So I sort of did that sort of my second to third year um, in uni and it turned into a job. So I ended up working for that MP for a couple of years, almost three years. Um, but while I was living there, that's when I got really immersed into um, the local politics, um, my CLP of Swansea West. And in 2012, myself and um, three other um, students from the university um, stood for council. So I was 22, I think we were all 22 and under. Um, I, <laughs> I was running as a, a paper candidate in an unwinnable seat against Liberal Democrats and um, ended up winning by 10 votes. Uh, look what happens when, <laughs> when you knock on doors. Uh, it, was a, it seemed like such a battle convincing people that didn't believe in contact creator that it actually does work, especially on that sort of micro local level. Um, so it was a really, really exciting night for us. Um, unfortunately though, as the years sort of progressed, it's, it was probably one of the most difficult jobs I've ever had. And that's not really because of the workload. Unfortunately, I experienced um, incredible amounts of sexism. Um, but I, it also took me a while to digest sort of the racism um, that I faced too. And I guess I didn't really see it or want to see it at the time. Um, it was just myself and um, another black woman that was um, elected uh, as the two people of color on the entire council of 72 um, <laughs> members in the city and county of Swansea. I'm sure you can guess most of them were older um, white men, um, people who had been in the party for a number of years, like to tell us how things how things would um, go down. And any time that we tried to implement change, what I found is that my colleagues who were also elected with me, two young, um, fantastic young men, um, both out, both part of the LGBT community, um, but white men nevertheless, were listened to a hell of a lot more than I was. And, um, it, it, it started um, creeping in 
And by the end of it, I, I had a really rough time. Um, and, and for a long time, I found it hard to encourage people to stand, people who looked like me and had similar politics to me. And um, I couldn't be truthful about how, uh, you know, uh, how amazing the experience should be because I, I had such a terrible one myself. Um, while I was still a counselor, I transitioned into being a, a trainee organizer for Welsh Labour. And at that point in time, my network opened up a lot. And I began to meet other counselors across the country, um, other BAME counselors, um, other young women uh, who were elected. And I started to realize just how uh, widespread the problem was. And it made me feel a little bit better, <laughs> um, certainly, but I also, um, I also felt sad because I kind of thought, well, you know, I'm 22, 23, I've, I've put in all of these hours to serve my community, I'm still getting treated like this, and it wasn't a good experience. Um, certainly not for my mental health or anybody's mental health. And I decided to, um, to move on from there, which was one of the hardest decisions I made because of course it did trigger a by-election, but it's something that I, I don't regret at all. Um, it was really tough. I think now going back and learning what I learned, I might have um, been able to stick it out a little bit longer. But I also think that some of the people who are there and still there have now realized um, how that behavior affected me and, you know, my younger colleagues. They, they could see it too. Um, so after I worked with Welsh Labour, um, it does, it gets more fun. <laughs> um, I spent loads of time um, as an organizer up and down the country. Um, but I was sort of armed with what I would face. Uh, one of the things uh, about being an organizer in the Labour Party is that every CLP is its own little bubble, um, but you, you kind of see reoccurring characters in every seat you're in. For those of you who have campaigned ac across the country, you'll know that. Um, but armed with the information that I had when I was in Swansea, I felt like I could go into these seats and better um, wrestle with some of the um, injustices that I saw, some of the challenges that I thought other people were going through and giving advice on how to how to go through it. And it made me feel more empowered. And I absolutely loved my time with the party. It was just the most amazing experience. I was there for four years, I think. Um, worked on referendums, general elections, the Welsh Assembly elections. Um, I was in Scotland for the general as well. Um, and it, it was amazing. I highly recommend to anybody who's starting out, <laughs> hopefully um, a program like the Trainee Organizer Program will come back and I would love to chat with people more um, on how to get involved with that. Um, I then realized I was here for almost a decade and um, I, was I was born here but brought up in California. I decided to go home for a couple of years and within a couple of months maybe, I um, got a phone call from the Clinton campaign and uh, joined them in uh, North Carolina, which is one of the tier one states. Um, and it was it was an incredible experience as well. I was a field director there and um, really, really eye-opening for anybody that wants to chat. How, how, can, um, how can Donald Trump really win in November? I could talk to you about it all day because <laughs> we've met all of the people that are probably so going to vote for him again, which is really scary. Um, but it was such an incredible experience. Um, so I then went into San Jose, um, which is Silicon Valley for those of you uh, that don't know, as I moved closer to home. And I was um, a policy advisor and a campaign manager for um, the mayor of San Jose. And <laughs> I, I guess, 
you would think that going over to California and being in the tech industry and in that tech bubble that things somehow are more progressive there. And I think they're about 10 years behind even where we are. I mean, it, next to my council experience, it was probably one of the least enjoyable working uh, environments that I've been in, again, because of pretty prominent racism and sexism. But this time I felt empowered um, with all of the experience that I had behind me to deal with it in a different way and challenge it confidently where I saw it. Um, and I left there actually um, really pleased with what I contributed. I think they were happy to let me go. <laughs> I think classically I was deemed as uh, sort of the difficult one. Um, myself and my colleague, um, who is a who was a black man um, from just the neighboring town. Uh, to San Jose, he and I would often kind of go into our little cubicles and be like, have you, oh my gosh, have you seen what's going on? How are we going to deal with the situation? Um, he was totally overlooked for promotions um, multiple times, and I was deemed sort of the difficult one. So I think when we both left, there was probably a sense of, whew, it's less difficult. Um, but I certainly hope that now, after everything that's been going on over there, there's a couple of situations that I really think about, and I hope that those people in that office are thinking about some of the comments that they made because they're pretty memorable. Um, so moving forward now, um, I'm doing a little bit of consulting. Um, I'm really excited to be joining um, efforts with the um, BAME network to continue um, sort of that fight that um, that myself and so many others on this call have fought and um, I'm especially excited to encourage younger generations to get involved and um, to, to seek a, a career in politics because there's so much that so many of you can offer and I feel like as we're entering this time where we're talking about it more and we're opening up more I think you know the onus is definitely on us to share the, these experiences and help coach each other through um, difficult conversations. Um, I think I've maybe talked for too long, <laughs> so I'm going to hand it back. Um, but I'm happy to take any questions. <laughs>